I'm always looking for the, you know, the, the WTF moments, you know, I'm looking for the moments where the audience go, whoa, did I just see that? You know, that's what I'm looking for. It's just trying to find that angle, that spin on something where it looks original and the audience feel like they're watching something fresh and different. They're not just being given the same rehashed version of something they've seen before in a different costume. My name is Rowley Earlham and I'm the stunt coordinator on Game of Thrones. So my priority objectives are to deliver the action, to make the actors look cool, keep the crew and the cast and the stunt performers safe from harm. We carried a stunt team of over 70 performers for six months um, on the last season of Game of Thrones, which is massive even for a big film. No other production has ever carried that many people that I'm aware of. For season eight, the, the two most complicated sequences were the Battle of Winterfell and the Siege of King's Landing. For the Battle of Winterfell, we had 70 stunt performers that endured 55 night shoots in, in a row, 11 weeks. We started shooting on January the 8th, 2017 and, and shot all the way up until Easter. We had temperatures recorded as low as minus 11, 12 below freezing, so it was pretty strenuous work. No one has shot a battle that long at night. No, no I don't think anyone's attempted that. We were given a really large blank canvas to work from. For example, when Jon Snow arrives into the courtyard at Winterfell, at this moment he checks in with many of the other characters. You know, he sees uh, Tormund and Gendry fighting on a body pile. He sees uh, Brienne and Jaime pinned to a wall fighting. He then gets met with an onslaught of whites and he, he turns right into a corridor, which actually um, is actually the Winterfell Kennels where Ramsay met his demise. And we walked in there and it was like, well, what can we do here? And I looked up and saw that the roof, although it had a roof, was pretty thin, really. And I was like, well, it'd be pretty cool if, you know, the whites started falling through the roof. And then we had construction, remove the roof, and then we put in truss above, and then we started dropping people on wires through the roof. And then there's a doorway there. So I was thinking, well, the door could come down as well with loads of whites on it. So actually, when we actually came to shoot it, you know, we have Kit in the front. We have Andy, who's the grip, holding the Maxima camera rig. I'm holding on to him and then we all journey together and I'm queuing as we go through. So literally as you come in, I queue. The first guy was a stunt guy called Richard and he comes through the roof and him coming from the roof is the ability for us to hinge round and then start pulling Kit through the tunnel. Then we had some like seven, eight other guys drop through the roof and then the door comes down and it all ends up with him going through and shutting a gate. <laughs> Now the gate was never originally there, but we had the gate put in so that we had a button on the end of the shot. That probably takes 10 seconds of the episode, but that took probably two weeks of work to prep, rehearse, design that particular segment. And then that is similar for every other shot and piece you see of the whole battle. The stump people uh, a massive creative force, you know. Often I'll get a script which will say the hound and the mountain meet on the stairs and what follows is a feast of fight choreography produced by Rowley Earlham and his team. And although it's a little bit daunting when you read that and go, oh, okay, thanks, because it never leaves a script, it's always in there, you know, we have to put that together. And so I don't think stunt people as a profession are necessarily given the creative credit they deserve. In terms of being asked to do things that are uh, tremendously dangerous, it, that doesn't really happen. Um, what tends to happen, somebody will write, for example, and the dragon uh, attacks and 12 people are set on fire, and it will generally be me saying, well, actually, we can do 20 or we can do 22. And we're not doing this to be reckless. We're doing it to try and push the boundaries of the spectacle that you see. It's just not about doing things that are more dangerous because we don't do things that are dangerous and that's one of the misconceptions of stunt work. You know, we're not daredevils. We mitigate and minimise as much risk as possible. Three, two, one, action! Three, two, one, action! Every single department tried to finish off the show 
um, with their best efforts um, and best intentions. I do feel that the show is more about the journey than it is the destination. You never want to keep going and keep going and then it start to lose its edge. I think it's good to finish strong and draw a line under it.